This is a continuation of the uh, simulation that uh, we are doing on the example problem um, on a two-pole grid tight inverter. So in part one, we looked at the most of the waveforms corresponding to the power flow from the DC side to the AC side. Uh, we look at some of the remaining simulation examples corresponding to that case, and then take up uh, the reverse power flow case. Okay, so what we looked at uh, in part one uh, are the um, um, for the case one, we looked at the grid current, confirmed that it matches with our uh, analytical uh, results, and we also looked at the DC link current by various methods and um, shown them to match well with, uh, uh, with, with, with again the analysis. Uh, so now we will look at um, the. Uh, I want to compare the instantaneous DC link current and the cycle by cycle average uh, current. So that is done in this scope. Um, so one set of waveforms is the measured ID and the uh, cycle by cycle average of that. And in order to uh, sort of explain exactly how this uh, DC link current uh, comes about, uh, I also want to um, look at the actual grid current IG uh, along with the control voltage VC. So in fact, it is the product of VC and the IG which forms the um, cycle by cycle average DC link current. So let's go ahead and uh, simulate. So these are the uh, simulated waveforms. The top plot shows the uh, instantaneous, which is the red, DC link current, and its cycle by cycle average, uh, the green waveform, which we have seen in the um, in the previous uh, simulations as well. Okay. Um, and um, the bottom plot shows the uh, the grid current, which is the red waveform, uh, along with the control voltage uh, VC, which is uh, scaled. Um, it's a signal which um, has a peak value which has to be less than 1, but that is scaled by a factor of 10 uh, in order to see it clearly along with the grid current. Okay. Now, it is a product of this VC and the um, um, grid current, which is the average DC link current, this uh, green waveform in the top plot. Okay. Um, so the reason why I'm showing this is to clearly show when the DC link current is negative both in a CCA sense as well as uh, in an instantaneous uh, sense. Okay. So whenever the um, the green, the VC and the IG have um, different polarities, so for example in this region, uh, VC is positive whereas the grid current is still negative. So correspondingly, the DC link current is negative in that period. Similarly, if you come here, the um, control voltage is negative but the grid current is still positive. Once again, the DC link current is negative in that uh, period. This corresponds to that power factor, um, uh, uh, non-unity power factor. Okay, so similar to the um, average DC link current being the product of uh, this uh, VC, which is exactly the D, the effective DD ratio, times IG, uh, the instantaneous DC link current is really the effective Q, which is QA minus QB, and Q itself is the switching signal, um, or similar to the gate drive of each of the each of the power poles. Uh, so let's zoom in on uh, say the near the peak of these currents and um, zoom in further. So this current here, this magnitude is exactly same as the grid current. So this is the current drawn from the DC link, it's same as the, um, the grid current whenever the uh, one set of diagonal pairs in the uh, full bridge conduct. Now this is the region when either the top two switches or the bottom two switches conduct, resulting in zero DC link current. Uh, and then uh, it follows the uh, the grid current in the next uh, sub-interval and so on. Okay, then now let's zoom in somewhere near the zero cross of uh, this current. Okay. Uh, maybe I'll zoom in even further here. Okay. Uh, so this is the, um, so the red waveform is the instantaneous DC link current. And this peak value still corresponds exactly to the instantaneous uh, grid current, um, probably about uh, maybe close to 19 amperes. So the grid current at the same instant is 19 amperes. Okay. Now VC is still positive, therefore this this pulse has a Q to be one. So QA minus QB is one at this instant, so you get same as the grid current. So somewhere in uh, this region, uh, so this is about minus uh, 18 or so, and the corresponding uh, grid current IG is actually plus 18, uh, but during this um, interval, the VC, the green signal is negative, therefore Q, which is QA minus QB, is actually minus 1. That, that's why the instantaneous uh, DC link current is negative uh, of the uh, grid current or minus 18 IPS. 
Okay, so we also have uh, a few more scopes and uh, probes uh, at this uh, point here. And uh, some of them, for example, this corresponds to the PWM blocks. This uh, shows the uh, power in each of the two sources, the DC source and the AC source. And the last probe has the um, relevant parameters uh, corresponding to this uh, switch one, its voltage and uh, its current uh, compared with the, uh, with the grid current. So I would uh, urge you to explore these waveforms uh, yourself. Okay, so then now uh, I want to move on to the case two, the reverse power flow from the AC side to the DC side. Um, so per our analysis, it needs a different control voltage, uh, the one which has actually a lagging uh, phase angle with respect to the grid voltage. So that is this control voltage. Its magnitude we calculated was a 0.75 uh, and this is the phase angle. So let's go ahead and remove uh, the original uh, VC corresponding to um, the other case and connect uh, this to as our control signal. Okay. So that's done. The only other change that, uh, actually there are several changes. Um, the next change is the, uh, the initial condition for the inductor current. So in the previous case, because of this uh, uh, minus 30 degrees uh, per factor angle, the current uh, at t equals zero was this um, negative value but in case two it is reverse power flow but at unity power factor therefore the current at t equals zero is uh, is just zero so let's change this initial condition to uh, zero amperes okay so that is done the next thing that uh, we need to change is um, we are using these um, uh, these current values, these, uh, this sinusoidal signal having the um, expected grid current value for verifying whether the grid current that comes from simulation matches with what we what we required based on the problem statement. Um, whereas this signal corresponds to case 1, we need to convert uh, uh, to the one corresponding to case 2. Okay? Um, okay, so going back to our uh, PowerPoint slide on uh, case 2, we see that the control voltage required was uh, this 0.751 and minus 3.7 degrees phase angle. That's what we entered um, in the in simulation. Uh, we are looking for what um, current value to enter for verification. So the current that we should enter is 29.41 peak, and uh, the phase angle is 180 degrees or minus 180 degrees. Okay. And the next step um, in simulation to change is the uh, the reference that um, uh, we use for verifying the DC link current. So that should be um, uh, this this um, uh, expression, a DC component of negative 11 and uh, um, this 120 hertz component with a peak of um, again 11.04. So that's what we will Okay, so I'll go back to plex simulation and change this value to 29.41. Okay, so that is uh, 29.41. For one and the angle should be 180 degrees so change that 180 okay the uh, last thing that needs to be changed is uh, our um, uh, this expression for the DC link current uh, which was um, okay that's uh, it's minus minus 11 point uh, zero two so it's minus 11 Zero two and this uh, was the one twenty eight component was also minus eleven point uh, zero four. Okay, and uh, this angle also needed to be changed. Okay, so which was uh, positive one hundred and seventy six point four. So that's uh, plus. 176.4 okay actually 176.24 okay. so that's the correct value okay so that completes all the changes that we need to uh, look at case 2 and we'll go ahead and simulate and the first set of waveforms that we will look at are the um, the different versions of the grid current Okay, so the uh, blue waveform once again is the uh, grid voltage for reference and uh, there are two waveforms in this, uh, uh, there's a red and a green waveform. The red uh, obviously is the instantaneous grid current with a high frequency component and the green is the uh, 
um, is the expression that we wrote. Okay? So if we zoom in near the peak of uh, these currents, uh, you can see the uh, um, the red wave form, which is the instantaneous current with the reference ripple, and that matches very well with the uh, uh, with the wave with the expression that we wrote for verification purposes. Okay? So if you go back to this uh, complete waveform. Uh, again, uh, we can clearly see that the um, the grid current is exact uh, phase opposition to the grid voltage, confirming reverse power flow at uh, unity power factor. Okay, then now uh, as in case one, we will look at the uh, three different versions of the DC link current. One by just taking the instantaneous uh, current from simulation and doing a cycle by cycle average of that then taking the uh, instantaneous BC assigned signal with the instantaneous grid current and taking their product um, and then finally writing the expression that we derived analytically uh, so here the clock gives the time input so that is used in this uh, cosine uh, 2 times 2 pi 60 times uh, the time the, the the output from the clock so let's go ahead and look at uh, the uh, the corresponding DC link currents okay and those are shown here and uh, the first thing to note is uh, the zero line is uh, right here and uh, this DC link current is uh, almost always uh, um, negative so that's what we expect because the power flow is from the AC to the DC side so the power is flowing into the DC source uh, resulting in this negative DC link current um, and also we can clearly see that um, uh, each of the three versions they, they superimpose on each other um, verifying that our analysis and simulation are, are, are correct. Okay? So now the final thing is uh, zoom in near uh, one of the peaks and uh, look at the, the three different uh, versions. Okay? So they, they show a very close match. Um, the um, black waveform is the uh, actual cycle by cycle average of the DC link and that matches uh, quite well with the analytically derived expression for the DC link current. The uh, next set of waveforms correspond to the uh, instantaneous and the cycle by cycle average of the DC link current. So let's go ahead and look at uh, that. Okay, the uh, top plot shows the, the red is the instantaneous DC link current and uh, the green is its uh, cycle by cycle average value. And for reference we are also looking at the control voltage in green scaled uh, by a factor of 10. Uh, along with the actual instantaneous grid current. Okay? Now again they are um, out of phase uh, as we expected for reverse power flow. Um, not uh, exact phase opposition. The grid current is exactly out of phase with the grid voltage but the green waveform is the control voltage which is uh, leading or lagging in this case uh, with respect to the grid voltage by about 3 degrees. So only in that um, small region corresponding to the 3 degrees the um, uh, instantaneous DC link current uh, is negative because the uh, switching signal Q which is QM minus QB at that instant is actually negative so this uh, small value here is that instantaneously small grid current times minus 1 uh, so if I zoom in uh, near any of these peak uh, you can see the uh, switching DC link current and it is um, just negative uh, this is the duration when uh, VC is negative but the grid current is positive as can be seen from this plot um, the grid current is uh, close to 30 amperes peak value so these uh, values here are minus 30 and uh, that is when one of the two diagonal pairs of switches connect and this is when either the top two or the bottom two switches connect uh, resulting in the prevailing interval where the current drawn from the DC source is uh, is zero